Hi students, I just thought we'd quickly discuss anaerobic threshold and onset of blood lactic accumulation. Um, just quickly, first of all the graph. Um, up the side here we have uh, lactate in millimoles per litre of blood. Um, and across the bottom we have the speed of the athlete running and the blue line shows the increase of lactate in the blood as the increase of the speed, as the athlete speed increases. Firstly, lactic acid is produced during anaerobic glycolysis or the lactic energy system. And pyruvate is the end product of the anaerobic process and is either turned into ATP, which is energy, or lactic acid, which is a waste product that when found in the muscles at certain levels can cause the muscles to slow down. The longer an athlete can put off using the anaerobic system, the better, as this will delay the accumulation of lactic acid in the working muscles. This is why training the aerobic system is important. Um, as it does not produce lactic acid. So as you can see on the graph, this athlete who is described as a good recreational runner is beginning to accumulate lactic acid at about 8 to 9 miles per hour and OBLA occurs at around 11 miles per hour. A highly trained athlete with an excellent aerobic system would be able to run at a quicker pace, maybe 10 miles an hour for anaerobic threshold and 13 miles an hour for OBLA to, due to the improved aerobic capacity delaying the use of the anaerobic or lactic energy system. So the two terms that I want you guys to remember are anaerobic threshold and onset blood lactic accumulation or OBLA. As you can see on the graph, anaerobic threshold is the point at which lactic acid begins to increase slowly. If the athlete continued at this pace, they would gradually increase lactic acid in the working muscles, which would eventually over time cause them to slow down. Before this point, at about six to seven miles per hour, the athlete can maintain this pace without accumulating lactic acid as the body is able to remove it as it's produced and therefore can continue much longer before fatigue will set in. OBLA refers to the point at which lactic acid is accumulating exponentially and if the athlete continues at this pace they will have to slow down extremely quickly. At this point the body is unable to remove the amounts of lactic acid being produced. Some research says that OBLA takes place at about 4 millimoles per litre of of lactate in the blood but it can be different for different athletes so a range of two, two to six millimoles with some people being outside of this range is a guide as to when OBLA can occur in athletes. The percentage of fast and slow twitch muscle fibers can have an impact on lactic buildup in muscles. Someone with a higher percentage of slow twitch muscle fibers will be more effective at producing energy aerobically which is breaking down the glycogen cleanly without the buildup of lactate. A person's anaerobic threshold and OBLA is important as it can determine types of training required to improve the anaerobic threshold and OBLA and where a player may be most suited to playing in a particular sport. For example, someone with a high anaerobic threshold, threshold or OBLA may be suited to running on the ball in AFL as opposed to someone who has a lower threshold. Um, someone who doesn't accumulate lactic acid quickly is going to be able to run um, quicker for longer in a game of sport. So there it is, anaerobic threshold and OBLA. You will need to be able to de define these, recognise them on a graph similar to the one um, that you're looking at and understand, understand how training can impact on them and improve those thresholds.